Welcome to an episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Until now, every time I have needed a device file, I, had cr I have created it with a shell command called make note. But of course, it is also possible to create this device file within your driver or kernel module. And today I want to show you how to do that. So as you can see here, I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH. And the first thing I will do is I will navigate into my Linux driver tutorials repositories folder. Here you can see the various drivers I have already created and as a template for today's video I will use episode 9 manual cdev and I will create episode 10 auto dev file for automatically created device file. Okay, so let's jump right into this folder here and let's see what we have in here. So hello under cdev.c are the C sources of our kernel module. And we have a makefile to build it and a readme which will give you some more information about this lecture if you're viewing this on GitHub. Okay, so let me edit hello cdiff.c and let's see what we can do in here. So in here, this is basically the example for manually re registering a range of character device numbers and manually creating a character device. So this is what we have done here. And we need this as a base to create our um, device file. So to um, create a device file, we have to do the following. First, we have to create our own custom class in slash sys slash class. And then we have to register um, a range of um, device numbers we have to create our character device and then we can um, create a device out of the device number and the class we have created. So therefore I will need one more static variable and this is from the type struct class. It's a pointer and I will call it my class. So this will be basically a pointer representing the class which we will create. Okay, so down here, I will start creating the class. Therefore, I will use the function class create. And the only argument I need here is the name of the class, which will appear in sys class. I will show you that when the module is loaded. And I will call the class my class. And in case, something went wrong, class create will return a zero or, or a null pointer. So in case my class is equal to null, I will print out an error message. Could not create class my class. And I will set the status to error no memory because I think that's the only reason why it should fail. And then I will jump to um, to free or delete cdef. Okay, but of course I don't have created this node yet, so let's do it here. And what we will, will do in delete cdef is exactly that. We will delete the character device. Why I'm using this go to fun um, this go to macro here and these labels here, I will explain to you when, yeah, a little bit later, when we have a little bit more code to discuss. Okay, but after that, we have created the clause my clause and a, a, and a folder should appear in the sys folder, so a folder called slash sys slash my class. And now the next step is to create a device for this class. And therefore I will call the function device create. So the first argument is the class the device belongs to and this is the class I've created here which is my class. The next argument is the parent device, if I would have one. But as I don't have a parent device here, I will, cr I will set this pointer to now. But for example, if we are writing a driver for a PCI device, I could use the PCI device as a parent device for the device I'm creating in the driver. 
Good, the next argument is the device number I want to use for this device and this is stored in device number. So we can see it's, um, yeah, it was allocated here. The next argument would be additional data I want to pass to this device, but here I don't want to pass any data to it, so I can set it to null. And the last argument or the last two arguments is the name of the device, which I will set to hello, percentage D. And percentage D can be substituted with a number like in printf, for example, and here I will set it to null. So my device will appear under slash dev slash hello zero here. Okay, and this function should return a pointer from the type struct device, but if it's returning a null pointer, an error occurred while um, creating the device. So in this case, I will copy these five lines here, and here I will write could not create device hello zero. I will set the error value to error no memory and I will go to um, delete class. And of course I have to add this label here. And here I will call the functions class unregister to unregister my class and then class destroy to destroy my class. But after this step, let's print out something here, um, created, created device under slash sys slash class slash my class slash hello zero. So this is basically um, the device file we have created. And out of this device here, udev, our device manager, will create the device file in slash dev. We'll take a look at this just in a second. But maybe now let me explain to you why I'm using these go to statements here and not because go to can cause a lot of unstructured programs. But in fact, here it's, it's helping me structuring the um, program. Because if I would not use go to here, here in this um, if clause, I would have to copy these two lines of code. And but here in the and in here, I would have to include this free un uninitialization lines of code. And you can see. As, um, as more we have progressed in our program, the more is to uninitialize in a case, and this if clause is getting longer and longer. But by using go to, we have a perfect defined deinitialization routine down here, and we're just jumping to it, keeping our if clause smaller or the instructions in our if clause as small as possible. And in my opinion, this makes the program more readable. So let me delete all this here. And yeah, that's why we're using go to and our labels. Good. But now one thing I should not forget is, of course, I have to um, clean up everything in the exit function. So I am unregistering the class, I'm destroying the class, and I have also to destroy the device. And this I can achieve with device destroy. And here I have to pass in the class, the device I want to destroy belongs to, and then the device number, which I want to destroy. Okay, and with that, the cleanup should be okay. Cool. So now let me try to compile this kernel module and let's see how much mistakes I've made. Okay, this is looking good. Then let me fire up tmux so I can have some more windows here. So in this window I will follow the kernels lock and then I will spawn a second window down here in which I will monitor our um, yeah, device manager udev. 
monitor. Okay. And so you can see here, this will give us two prints or two headers before the prints. So udev is an event which udev sends after rules pr um, processing and kernel are the kernel u events. Okay. So what I will do now is I will load our kernel module. Hello cdev.ko. And you can see here the registration of the device number worked or the allocation. And we could also create this device here. And if I take a look to sys, I have now a folder here called or sys class, sorry. So if I go to this class, I now have a, a folder in here called my class, which is right here. And in this my class folder, I have a device called hello zero. And this is also a folder which um, yeah, has other various files and folder in here. But if we take a look at um, this dev file here, you can see it consists of the major and minor device number. Okay, and if we take a look at dev, we can also see a device called hello zero in here, which has exactly the major and minor device number which we would expect. Cool. So let's take a look at this udev log here. So first the kernel added the class my class, then the kernel added the device my class hello zero, and the kernel added the module hello cdev. And now udev added the class, my class, and it's added, it added the, the device. And by adding the device, udev automatically created the um, device file here for us. So that's basically what we can see here. And the last thing I want to test is if the read callback, which is implemented for our device, works too. So let me read from hello zero, and we can see this print k here, so reading from the device also works. Okay, cool. So that's how to automatically create device files from within your kernel module with a little bit of help from udev. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.